بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah the Lord, Churcher and Sustainer of the world the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment All praise is due to Allah and Allah's peace and blessings be upon his last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his pure family, his loyal companions and all those who follow them with righteousness and good deeds until the day of judgment, Amin. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. One of the beautiful aspects of this religion is how much importance it puts on kindness. Acts of goodness and kindness to others is of high importance in Islam. It is an integrated part of the belief itself and the worship itself and the moral system in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala related to us in the Holy Quran one of the most important criteria of prophets and messengers. Peace be upon them all. And it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat. Verily, they used to hasten, to hurry in acts of goodness, acts of kindness. Now, in our religion, it's very important to have competition and to hasten and to hurry up and to raise one another in goodness. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Hurry or hasten to forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and heaven. In the other one, raise one another, سَابِقُوا In the other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلِيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ And in this, let the competitor compete. So the competition is what? In what? Real competition is in this. Because you are in competition with every other Muslim in the world. So it's not only between you and people around you. So me and the 500 people around or the thousands of Muslim in this city. No. You are competing with each and every Muslim. Not only from now. Not even from the time of the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, but every believer from the time of Adam السلام, till the end of time. That is the competition. Because heaven is for all. So as you see, the competition is very intense. And that is why Allah Taala emphasized this to uh, grant those doer of goodness higher place in heaven. Now Allah Taala ordered us directly in the Holy Quran to do good deeds. And he linked that with success in this world and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do good deeds so that you may prosper, you may succeed. In the other, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked that with obtaining the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, inna muhsinin. And do good deeds or kindness so that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the doers of kindness. Now, there are so many different types of kindness. Which one is the most important one? Actually, all of them are important. Another beautiful aspect about the religion is that anything that benefits other people, any kind of good deeds, any act of kindness to anything around you, this is a charity in Islam. This is something that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only acts of kindness to people, even acts of kindness to animal, that is also part, subhanAllah. So anything, as the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu said in one hadith, do not be little, do not underestimate any act of kindness. Then the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned so many different kinds. Some of them he says, even to remove harm that is in the road of people. Even to meet your brother with a smiling face, subhanAllah. Even to guide someone who, who, who needs guidance, somebody who is asking you for directions. To help someone who is carrying a heavy load, carry it on himself or uh, on his car nowadays, on his uh, mount. And the Messiah <coughs> continued to give so many different examples. Till the Messiah <coughs> in one narration, he mentioned even, even to relieve a person who is feeling lonely. Subhanallah. Relieve him from that loneliness. Somebody who is away, far, not in his place. And feeling lonely just to keep him company or just raise his moral. The Messenger Muhammad said, even that is an act of kindness that is a charity, subhanAllah. How beautiful is that? So any good deeds that you do. Now, in the other hadith, the Messenger Muhammad even gave an example. Do not be little any act of kindness, even to give a gift to her neighbor. That is the, the woman giving a gift to her neighbor, even if it is a bare foot of an animal. The hoof of an animal, who is that? Without any flesh, 
But it says, do not be little any act of kindness. It's better than nothing. Subhanallah. So if there is a need in the society and you have only one dirham with you, half a dirham, quarter of a dirham, do not be little that. Do it. Don't say this is nothing. It's not going to do anything. No. It could be too much with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty does not deny or do an injustice, not even a single atom. And if it is a good deed, if it's an act of kindness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ وَإِنْ تَكُ حَسَنَةً يُضَاعِفْهَا And if it is an act of kindness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it. And He give from Him alone lots of bounties. Subhanallah. That is the kindness in Islam towards the acts of kindness. Now, there are etiquettes to the act of kindness in Islam. First and foremost, the act of kindness or the good deeds that you do to other people, you should not accompany that with any kind of harm to them. What do you mean? How is it possible to harm someone when you are helping him? Is it possible? Could be? Imagine somebody, for example, helping someone who is in need and then asking him to do something for you. Help me with this in exchange. This is actually an exchange. That is a form of harm. Maybe he does not want to. Or do so and so. Or uh, lower the price of your item for me or sell me your car or something that he does not but now he feels shy now he feels that he is indebted to you so he might do it although he does not want to that is actually a form of harm or mentioning that in front of everybody ah uh, this guy for example he always asks for me and I always ask him and he never thanks and so on and so forth that is also harm so any kind of harm whether it's physical or emotional or psychological all of that is forbidden that is the first step Second one, do not mention it to him even later on. You know, count it as a favor against him. So whenever he comes, he says, haven't I already given you? Haven't I helped you? How many times do I have to help you? I've already given you. That is also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the verses that we recited in the, in, uh, in the salah, that these two types of things, you know, saying, mentioning the favor, or accompanying that favor with harm, will negate, negate, negate the acts of kindness that you did. You will, get any, you will not get any reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It abolishes it. So the second thing after that, do not wait for a return. In doing a favor, expecting a favor back. We do that many times, yes? Right? Sometimes you give a gift to somebody, you know, because most likely he's going to give you something back. So you are not doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are expecting the return, expecting benefit. Okay, if I give a gift to my boss, that is because I like him or because of something else? Only Allah subhanahu wa knows, but it is very critical, right? So when you expect goodness from other people, it becomes much more critical. Second one is also don't wait for thanks, even saying of thanks or making dua. A common mistake, usually when we do good to somebody and he says, uh, we say pray for us. Pray for us, that is the, the return, that's it. You get the prayer back. So nothing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ah, subhanahu wa Really? Yes. You asked for a favor back. He did it. So that's it. You get it. Common mistake. Aisha radiallahu anha. When she used to give a gift to someone. And she sent the servant or, or, or somebody with it. And she asked them, what did they say? So their reply say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, for example. So she says immediately, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. A dua for a dua, so that our reward will remain full. Subhanallah. See how wise she was. Whatever form of dua, she immediately replied that. So, so that, is, that is a question. Don't wait for any of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned about uh, al-abrar and surah al-insan, when he mentioned their criteria, when they help and support others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they give, they share their food. They give the food even if they were in need of it. They're already in need of it. They give it to the poor and the needy and to prisoners. Prisoners of war at that time, they were the polytheists, the non-believers. Still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered that act of kindness to them is a very important criteria of believers. Subhanallah. See how important it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned even their act of kindness to the prisoners, those that are actually polytheists at the time. And mushrikun, those were their enemies at the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the criteria of the good people. They share 
their food or they give their food even when they are in need of it themselves. Some of those prisoners before they used to mention that the, the Muslims at the time they used to eat the date because it was very abundant in Medina, nothing in foreign, and they will give us the bread. The bread at the time was very rare, very precious. So they will eat the less quality food and they give us the best quality food, subhanAllah. With the prisoners, their enemies, who were about to kill them just minutes before. But why do they do it? Now this is the important thing. After that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they say, we give you only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the continence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not want from you any favor back, nor any thank back. Here, this is the proof. When you do things, don't expect the return and do not wait for thanks. No. So that you will not negate it. Another uh, aspect of that uh, acts of kindness is to do it only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remind yourself all the time. Why we say that? Why we emphasize that? Many times nowadays, sometimes you do it with all of that. You do not wait for a return. You do not want, uh, wait for any thank, etc. Alhamdulillah, all of that. But when a problem happens between you and them, when they do something bad to them, to you, you start remembering that I've already done so and so for them, I've already helped them, and they didn't return any of that back. You start, that is how shaitan tricks you. Ah, very critical. Be very careful. This is one of the tricks of shaitan. Say, I'm helping my sister, but she always do one, two, three. Or she always does one, two, three. Ah, yes. So when a problem happens, yeah, many of us fall into this. Be very careful. No, you did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will get your full reward. Don't worry. Nothing is lost. Don't regret it. Or don't wait for favors from people. Those are the uh, general etiquettes uh, of doing kindness and good deeds to others. Now there are many fruits of that, many results. What is the result? Why should anybody do of that? First and foremost, of course, you will get the love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will get also help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in need. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, and as the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, we have already clarified that uh, before. When you are in the need of someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be in your need when you are in need. When you help someone who is in distress, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you when you are in distress in this world and in the hereafter. When you cover the fault of someone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cover your fault in this world and in the hereafter. So it continues to pay you back all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to pay you back. It never stops. So this is one of the greatest re uh, reward of it. And also, it is better to keep it secret. Nobody knows about it. Not even your relatives, not even your wife or children. Nobody knows about it. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. This is much more important, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, that showing, showing uh, or, or doing charity in the open is a good deed. It's an act of goodness. Do it at any time. For example, if there is a need now, and they are collecting charity, and you are doing it, of course, many people will know. So do you say shaitan is tricking you and don't do that because people are looking? No, do it. It's a good deed. But if you could do it in secret, this is even better. Except if people imitate you. If you are a role model for people, people are going to imitate you, then doing it in the open is much better because more people will do that good deed and it will spread uh, within the society and more people will benefit. We have one uh, beautiful example, Abdullah bin Mubarak, one of the great scholars uh, of Islam in the early uh, centuries of Islam. He had one student with him who used to attend regularly. Then one day he didn't come. And the next day he didn't come. So he asked about him, Where, what is wrong with him? And they told him that he was imprisoned because of unpaid debt. So he went to the man that has that debt and he told him, how much is your debt? He told him 10,000 dirham at that time. So Abdullah bin Barak counted 10,000 dirham for him and gave it to him and told him to withdraw the case against that man and let him go. But do not tell anybody about this at all. Nobody should ever know about this. As what he says, okay. And then the man was uh, released. He came the next day to Abdullah al-Barak. When he came, Abdullah al-Barak immediately asked him, what's wrong? What happened? Why you didn't come? Why you didn't show? What was the reason for your absence? So that he will never have any hint that it might be Abdullah al-Barak. He said, I was in prison. For what? He says, I had unpaid debt. Subhanallah. He said, then what happened? How could you get out? So he says, one, one good guy came and he paid uh, the debt back. I don't know who is he, but uh, I was released. He said, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping people. So he said, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't know. The student didn't know about it till after the death of Abdullah bin Mubarak. Many such examples. One of the grand 
in the line of the grand uh, children of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of them used to carry the food at night and deliver it to poor people nobody knew poor people at night every night somebody who is covering his face he will knock he will leave the food and go when he died they didn't know nobody ever knew who was uh, that person when he died subhanallah when he died 60 families were hungry at that day, uh, at night that single night so what happened no food came tonight subhanallah so they searched who died today this night who, who died and they found uh, subhanallah that is one of the grandchildren of the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that time and they found the shoulder his shoulder was blackened from carrying so much weight every night nobody ever knew about it that is that is the importance of it when doing it do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for anybody that is very very important because you'll get much more reward uh, from allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala now another important benefit from that is it will protect your offspring your children, your grandchildren, your whole lineage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an example in the Holy Quran. Remember Al-Khadr and Musa alayhi salam in their journey, when Musa alayhi salam went to Al-Khadr to try to learn from him, they went into a village, they demanded for a little help and support from that village because they were travelers, they refused to offer him, them any food or drinks. When they were leaving the village, they passed by a wall that was very old and about to fall. Shabby wall. So he fixed it. Al Khadr fixed it. So Musa salam told him, Why did you do it for free? Why not ask them for something in exchange so that we can buy some food and drink? We are hungry and thirsty. So he explained to him later on that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to fix this wall because it belonged to two orphan child, orphan children, two orphan children. And their father buried for them a treasure under it. And their father was a righteous person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to fix it so that they will grow up and they will discover that treasure themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the righteous person Al-Khadr with the messenger, great messenger Musa alayhi salam to fix the wall for those two little orphans. Subhanallah. Because, because their father was a, good, a, a, a doer of kindness. Their father was a kind person who used to help others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the offsprings. So as you see, it is extremely, extremely important to do this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one important aspect nowadays is actually the act of good, uh, kindness or goodness that is in explaining the true face of Islam, the true essence of the religion of Islam. Because sadly there are many misunderstandings among Muslims and among non-Muslims. Many misconceptions, misunderstandings, accusations, etc. Explaining and practicing the correct Islam. This is one of the best acts of kindness that you can do. So that you will show the real face of Islam, the real essence of Islam. And so that everybody will know. This is an act of good, uh, kindness that will continue for as long as people are benefiting from that knowledge. So whatever little knowledge that you have about Islam, share it with everyone around you. Share it with your family, with your children, with your neighbor, with your friends. When you meet someone, when you hear an, uh, a misunderstanding, try to clarify it. This is one of the best acts of kindness uh, nowadays. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be the doers of goodness and the doers of acts of kindness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us kind and peaceful and merciful to ourselves, to our children, neighbors and society and to all of humanity. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama taslima kathira.